Hold on one second. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Slip Punches show. Damon Gonzalez from Latin Box Sports. We apologize for the technical difficulties earlier. Without further ado, let's bring on Brian Custer to the show. Brian, how are you? Man, I'm doing a lot better now. Doing a lot better now. It, it is good to when you live in a house with a couple of teenagers who are more technically advanced than you are. <laughs> That's awesome, right? Ain't it great to have kids? Absolutely, man. Especially dealing with iPhones, laptops, uh, all of this <laughs> copy paste, all this stuff. They do it all for me. I'll tell you what, we are so delighted to have you take a few minutes of your time and your busy schedule to come on the Slip Punches show. Um, I've been really hunting you down, trying to get you on the show for a while. And I'm so, so happy to have this opportunity. Man, it's an honor. It's an honor, man. Love, love everything that you do. And, uh, uh, you know, listen, I, I couldn't wait to come on. Uh, it's been it's been busy as a lot of people, especially trying to survive through this pandemic. But boxing's back. And that's a great thing. Brian, you know, last year it was like a, a time warp. We have been through so many fights from the Wilder Furies to to the Charlos. There was just so much going on. And then everything in March came to a standstill. How how crazy was that on your end, of course, coming off of such a busy schedule with Showtime? Yeah, you know, it, I think, you know, when sports came to a halt, you could see how much sports means to this country. I mean, it almost felt like the country came to a, to a halt as well. And for a person like myself who makes a living um, calling events, I mean, you know, I was like millions upon millions of other Americans who was out of work and uh, for five months. So, you know, I think like a lot of people was just happy that uh, sports can get back, get back going, um, give people uh, an escape from everything that is going on. But more importantly, you know, get back to covering the sports uh, that I love. So, uh, you know, obviously it's a good thing, not only for the sport, but obviously for the country. Now, Brian, I'll tell you right right before we get into the boxing, you know, let's 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 look at the tape, the tail of the tape. You started in Ohio. Yeah. You started with so many outfits from Fox Sports. You moved to Texas. Your career advanced. You started, but but in New Jersey, you called the football with the Jets. You did so much in sports reflect on that because there's so much of a decorated history around your career yeah i mean you know i think uh when i first started out I, you know i started in news so uh and i think it was a great thing for me because it allowed me to learn how to chase a story search stories things of that nature it was it was really probably the best thing that I had ever done. I was covering City Hall, doing those kind of things. So uh, it was great uh, doing news in Columbus, Ohio, then going to Dallas. And then once I got to Dallas, they finally uh, made me a sports anchor there. And, um, you know, sky was the limit, uh, covering the Cowboys, covering the Mavericks, uh, doing that type of stuff. And then, you know, eventually moving uh, here to the Northeast and, uh, you know, being working in New York City. Uh, and then as you talked about doing a lot of stuff with the Jets, um, so, you know, it, it, it was, it, it allowed me to be well-rounded. Um, you know, one, one thing I'll never forget is, uh, the great James Brown, uh, gave me a, gr some piece of advice a long, long time ago. Um, he said, you know, Brian, the more you can do the better. And I always took that to heart. So not only if it's awesome. doing basketball, football, the NFL, college basketball, college football, doing boxing, you know, I make sure that, you know, I do it as if. I'm calling a Super Bowl because you never know who's watching. And in our business, again, the, the more you can do, the better. Now, I'll tell you, you know, the champions ain't just these guys that we have such a passion for in the ring that win these titles. You're a champion. You know, you're a cancer survivor. And yeah. You've been through so much in your life. How much reflecting is that? I mean, you have such a journey and, and just expand on where you are in life today. You look amazing. You're doing Thanks. so, so good, man. I'm just very pleased to have this honor and talking to you tonight. 
Well, you know, listen, I, you know, it's one of those things where uh, I think someone asked me not too long ago, um, how, how does how does cancer change your life? And and I think for me, it, you never take any day for granted, which you can do when you haven't been stricken with something or you haven't faced your mortality. And uh, I think before I got the diagnosis, yeah, I think like a lot of people, I took every day for granted. But, you know, now, like today, today was a great day. It was 84, 85 degrees out here. It was sunny. Some people may say, oh, it's a little hot, it's a little humid. To me, I had to, like, I could, I could smell the wind. And uh, those are the type of things that I notice now that I didn't notice before. And, you know, I just tell everybody, man, it, it, there's no way uh, you can ever prepare yourself when a doctor looks you across uh, the table and tells you, you know, you have cancer, it's aggressive. If you don't have surgery, you know, you, you know, you could die in a year or so. And I mean, I, I, when he told me that, man, I, I mean, all I could think about was my boys who were young at the time. Will I ever see them grow? Will I ever see them get married? Will I see them graduate from high school? Uh, would I live another year? And, uh, you know, it's, it's just one of those humbling things. But you know what? Uh, I, I don't ever want anyone to go through it. Uh, but it was probably one of the best things that happened to me because I kind of had to refocus my life, uh, what was important to me, uh, stop taking things for granted. And I'll be honest with you, uh, the day I laid after I had surgery, the day I laid in that hospital bed, you know, I was working for a sports network in New York City at the time. And that was the day uh, right after surgery. It was like two in the morning. I had all kinds of things hooked up to me. And I laid there and I said, you know what? I think I'm going at the end of this contract, I'm not going to resign. And I think I'm going to sign with Showtime and just do boxing. And um, that was the day I changed my life. That was like six, six years ago. And uh, that, yeah, I, I went to Showtime full time. And, you know, a lot of things came my way afterwards, too. So it was it was the best decision I ever made. There's no feeling in the world like hearing the first bell in the fight and you just up there doing your job at Showtime. How, how amazing and humbling is that? With, with the roots we know in Showtime, with Freddie Pacheco, yeah. with Al Bernstein, with just so many legends that have called the blow-by-blows, and just you being a part of, how, how humbling is that for you? I don't take it for granted. I mean, I've worked with and, and still work with some of the best from Jim Gray to Steve Farhood, Al Bernstein, as you talked about, Mauro Ranallo is a phenomenal, phenomenal broadcaster. And, you know, one thing I do, uh, and, you know, now all of a sudden, Mauro, he, he, I think he kind of got wind of it a couple of years ago, and he, he pats me on the back every time, and he kind of does it himself. When I first started, uh, I would just, uh, right before we would go on air, I, I would hear our producer in my ear, and he would say, like, you know, a minute, and we're on live. And I would just look around the arena, and I would just look all the way around the arena, and I, I'd always tell myself, wow, in, in 60 seconds, millions of people are going to be watching you. This is, this is what an opportunity, uh, what a blessing it is to have this kind of job. And I do that in every venue that we're in before we go on air. I just take 60 seconds for myself, first of all, to say a little prayer, to say thank you. And then secondly, to Amen. just awesome. take, take it all in. You know what I mean? Because it can be gone awesome. tomorrow. And I, I just love that. I love it. Absolutely. And I'll tell you, you know, congratulations um, with the whole staff on Showtime. Yeah. It was so awesome to see boxing back and you being now. And I'm sure when you had time off, you saw some of top ranked shows and you seen the, the bubble shows. You finally got to experience and adapt to something so different how was that experience in knowing there wasn't a crowd around and it was just a different atmosphere? What were your thoughts uh, as you were broadcasting that evening? It, it was different. I mean, um, you know, we uh, arrived in Connecticut because we're going to be doing all of our fights here forward in Connecticut at the Mohegan Sun. And uh, so we arrived. First thing we had to do, we had to go straight to our rooms. We could not go out right. uh, because we were going to get tested early that next morning. Yes. Um, so we got tested that next morning and it was the same thing again, go right back to your room, wait for the results. And, uh, we'll let you know, uh, if you'll be able to work on Saturday. And, uh, 
Luckily, I got my results back, obviously, that evening. Came back negative, which was great. And you, and your heart is pounding. My heart was yeah. even pounding then. You know what I mean? Sure, and I'm, sure. And, I, and I, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I know I haven't done anything crazy. So, but still, you're still nervous because you want to know what the results are. Uh, so you get the results back negative. Uh, but again, we could not go out of our rooms. Everything room service. Uh, and then Saturday, once we got there, you know, you had to wear masks. We were broadcasters, the only ones that were allowed to take our mask off. Correct. To broadcast. That was it. Only the broadcasters. And, you know, I tell you, Damien, the, the, the most interesting thing about it is because when you're in those venues, you hear the crowd is so loud, music's pumping. So it, it, all of that's kind of going through your ear as you're talking. And this time, as I was talking, I felt like, wow, am I too loud? Because I felt like my voice was going all throughout the arena because, again, there, there's only the key personnel from Showtime, maybe the judges commission people. That's it. And so when I started off and I'm talking, I felt like, man, should I bring down the volume a little bit? Maybe, maybe I'm talking too loud because there's no, hardly anybody in that arena. It was different. Uh, and, 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 you know, you can hear the punches, you can hear the yes. corners, you can yes. hear you, yeah. Kevin Hunt, Cunningham, you hear the instructions, Hey, slip now jab. Now move. you can hear all of that type of stuff, <laughs> stuff that you could never hear before. Exactly. So, <laughs> and I think I think it, you, it was reflective on the on the broadcast that you guys heard a lot more than than you're accustomed to. Absolutely, absolutely. It was just you know a different element, but fun to watch. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and listen, I, I'll give you credit. I'll give credit to the guys, and they said that you know I, I thought that maybe guys would be rusty. Um, through this pandemic because a lot of guys had different stories. Some guys said, Hey, look, I really couldn't pay for testing for sparring. So, you know, I had to do a lot of cardio. We did a lot of stuff outside. We didn't want to go into the gyms and then other guys had no, and look, I got private gyms. I paid, we paid for testing to get sparring. Um, and we're ready, but they all said the same thing. I haven't fought in a while. I'm ready to go. And I think that's the good thing is that because guys haven't fought in a while they're eager they're eager to put on a really good show and i think that you're going to especially from the the high class guys you're going to see some quality boxing i'll tell you what i mean just a week ago when showtime announced all these incredible fights and just hearing the charlos earl spence and garcia yeah. how insane is this knowing that the excitement's back and we're going to see some really great fights in the next couple of months. Yeah, I'm excited about it. I mean, um, you know, David Benavidez, we got him fighting uh, next weekend. I mean, he's, he's probably one of the most exciting fighters at 168. The way he throws always comes forward. Oh, yeah. um, the Charlos are going to be great because, as you talk, it's, it's, a day, it's like a day-night doubleheader. You get one Charlo who's going to headline the first three fights in the afternoon. And I, I would assume it would probably be somebody like Jamal. And then in the evening, you get the other Charlo because he's going to be in the unification fight against Jason Rosario, headlining the last three fights that evening. But you, you get it all for one price. Uh, I think that's going to be great. You get, you know, Gervonta, Tank Davis against Leo Santa Cruz. We've all wanted to see Tank in a step-up fight. You know, I give Leo Santa Cruz props. You know, he's like, look, I've been wanting this fight for a while. I think I can beat him. I can overcome him. I don't think his conditioning is where it should be. You know, so I think that's going to be a really, really good fight. And, you know, I, I got the opportunity because I, during the pandemic, I started a podcast. So I uh, call it the Last Stand Podcast Last Stand, that, people, yes. yeah, that people can uh, can subscribe to on YouTube. You know, I just interviewed the Charlos. Uh, so that episode will be dropping next week. Uh, we got the Charlo. I'm doing Danny Garcia uh, next week, interviewing him next week. So I'm looking nice. forward to that and doing Keith Thurman, interviewing him uh, tomorrow. And that that episode had dropped in a couple of weeks as well. So I'm, I'm excited because I got a lot of questions for these guys. And and we've had Errol Spence on, on the podcast. And he, he talked about the Andy Garcia fight and that, you know, he said that he didn't want to leave 147 without fi fighting Bud Crawford. But he sees it as a fight that will happen, he said, at the end of uh, 2021. I'll tell you what. Um Keith Thurman's down here in the Tampa, Florida area where yes. I'm at. He's in the clear yeah. with St. Pete, which is across the bridge. That kid, let me tell you, he is one time. You know, Keith Thurman, he's right in the mix. I can't wait to see what's going to happen in this next fight. 
I, I, listen, I, I'm excited to talk to Keith because, listen, I think people forget at one, at one point he was the man. Uh, he was the unified champ. And now all of a sudden, you know, so many people have already contacted me, like, make sure you ask him, why can't he stay healthy? Uh, make sure he a- you ask him, why didn't he fight such and such? And so, you know, there's a lot of questions I have for Keith. You know, and he's never shy about giving his opinion on things. Correct. So I think it's going to be a really, really, really good episode. I can't wait to talk to him. What time does that episode go on? So uh, we, we, we're going to we're going to interview him. We'll interview him tomorrow. It'll probably be a couple weeks before we drop it because we're doing okay. Mike Vick. We interview Mike Vick. Mike Vick's episode drops tomorrow, so we'll run nice. that all week. The week after that is the Charlos. And matter of fact, we did both Charlos. So and I'll tell nice. you, Damon, I'm going to give you, Damon, I'm going to give you a sneak peek into this. Okay. And for folks who are listening and they that they need to subscribe to the to the podcast to do this. The Charlos are two interesting guys because we interviewed them both. We talked a lot about their careers, but I will tell you this, and I, I think a lot of people will be surprised. They actually that episode is going to be so fiery. Those two got upset with each other. During the episode, I couldn't believe it. But I tell you, a lot of it stems from when Jermel changed trainers and went with Derek James as because they grew up with Ronnie Shields. Sure. And when when we we got into that, man, the different the sibling rivalry that came out into that is unbelievable and i think a lot of people are going to be surprised when they watch that episode wow definitely looking forward to that yeah brian listen kindly give a give a shout out to all your followers all your fans and how can they follow you on social media oh man they got you uh they they can follow me on twitter and instagram at b custer tv uh simple at b custer tv on twitter and instagram we have a, a website it's called uh last stand sports Yes. They can go to the website and and then the podcast. It's the Last Stand podcast. Obviously, a play off my last name uh, with Brian Custer. And you can go to YouTube, subscribe to us on YouTube, and wherever you stream uh, podcasts, whether it's Google, Apple, iHeart, all of that type of stuff. And you know, the Last Stand podcast is also on Instagram too. So we always have uh, updates on who our guests are going to be. And I mean, this is great, man. Because listen, I'm big a big fan of yours. You, I mean, you've had so many. Of people on here that I respect from Claudio Trejos to all, all kind of people on Thank here. You. So, I mean, you, you're a legend in what you do and appreciate what you do. And, you know, I think one of the good things is that we got the opportunity to work with Abner Mades, uh this weekend. And I think he's going to be great. I hope he wants to uh, continue to be a broadcaster. Now, he said he still hasn't got the boxing thing out of him. And he says he wants another fight. But, yes, you know, I, I, I told you, I said, look, man, you, you you can make a lot of money and, and you can stay healthy doing the broadcasting thing. But he says he wants to do that. But he's, he, he did say he wants another fight. So uh, it will be interesting to see how long he sticks with the broadcasting and then steps back into the ring as well. That's awesome. Brian, please give a shout out to all your fans. Man, let me tell you something. I, I appreciate everybody uh, that has supported me, especially when I had you know, the, the cancer diagnosis. Um, listen, the great thing is uh, I got a lot of your prayers. It's helped me tremendously. Uh, I try to stay healthy. And just this past July, I had my doctor checkup. It was the first time that in my blood work, I pumped out a zero. So that means wow. the cancer was undetectable. And I haven't had that's, that in six years. So, that's awesome. uh, yeah, man, it, it is great. And I, I, I attribute that to a lot of people, man, and their prayers for me, uh, guys like you. And listen, I got, you know, people don't know, you know, you sent me private DMs just saying, hey, man, I'm praying for you. I'm thinking about you. And that kind of stuff just helped me every day, every day. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you, man. I I just appreciate you and appreciate everybody that has uh, been supportive of me in my career. Brian, you keep on punching, my friend, and we hope to have you come back on our show. Let's do it, man. I appreciate you, Dame. Awesome. Support you 100 percent. Going to be listening out to these tremendous shows with Michael Vig, with the Charlos, and following with Keith Thurman. Looking forward to it. Okay, Damien. Bless to you, man. Thank you very much. Bless you too, my brother. Thank you so much for coming on. Absolutely. Take care.
Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to the Slip Punches show with Brian Custer. Uh, what a great guy, man. It was, it was a great opportunity to have him come on tonight and just talk to everybody and share. And, again, that's what this is all about, man. It's about communicating. It's about networking with everybody in boxing, listening to the stories, listening to the great news, listening to the updates. And we're just going to keep on punching no matter what. Have a great evening. On behalf of Damon Gonzalez, we're out. Good night.